is, is not able to join us today, but um, I'll let Daniel or Marie lead. Sure, I don't know if you'd want to, to uh, take take point of that, Marie. I assume we're each just kind of going to go through the areas that we're that we're in charge of and talk about where, where each one's at. Yep. Uh, if we go back to the slide deck, uh, I've, uh, the first slide has been updated with open items for today. Can someone send the latest slides and pin it to the chat? It's, it's the same set, it's the same link, and I just reposted it in uh, Slack. It's, it's quite high on, it was basically oh. at the bottom of the Slack. Found it. Okay. I'm going to pin it. It's, it's in the chat as well. I think he's already pinned, but that's fine. All right. Okay. And so, uh, Tyler, uh, any luck talking to the communications folks about formatting? Um, I've heard nothing. I've put, I've, put, um, I've put something up on the help needed, but it might require an email to the community of graphic-y people. Okay. Um, so I'll have to... the, um, well, actually, you, Tyler, have seen me emailing very specifically, like, right? Uh, like, need help was X, and I'm emailing the uh, list of people, right? Do you want to do the same uh -huh. with graphic design people? Yeah, I'll go look for um, some graphics people. My only, my only worries is like time. Is, are, we, are we presenting this on Monday or Tuesday? It's Monday in Europe and like 3 a.m. Monday for me, I think. All right. I didn't realize it was as early as that, to be honest. I thought it was, but then again, yeah. It does, it's pretty undescript on the website and I've not seen any more than what the website says. So. First time they're, they're doing virtual, so. Kind of expect yeah, it's, I think, yeah, it's mid, midday, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, something like that, I think. But I don't know where we are on that schedule as well, I knew. Okay, so let's, uh, let's make sure that we find someone in the next two days so we can uh, have a presentation by the weekend or something. If not, I'll, I'll jump in and just do my best. So, and just to confirm, so that's for the folks who are on PSD or uh, PSD, uh, that's the 22nd at 3 to 5 a.m.? I, I think it's something like that, yeah. Okay. Oh, I feel sorry for you guys. I mean, what's, <laughs> oh, I, can't imagine what it'd be, I can't imagine what it'd be like to be doing calls at 1 o'clock in the morning. Or <laughs> that's right, turn them on fair play, hey? <laughs> no, never, never, never had to do one of them ones. I don't know what it's like. It's such a, such a hard life for you guys finishing by about 10 o'clock at night. Well, honestly, what's late, what's late as you guys have been up for this? Um, oh, man. Probably about... Five in the morning. Usually, I go to bed for a little while with my guys, and then I caffeinate, and I'm up either doing my normal work or doing this slightly more than normal work. I actually wake up super early, so I tend to go bad, you know, normal like 11 p.m. But I wake are you, up. Are you a, are you a bit of a lark? I'm definitely a night owl, so that works. Anyways, enough of that talk. Um, where do we start, Marie? Okay. Oh, next. Do you guys have the links document up? The, the, the document with all the links. Um, I can get it up. Okay. Yeah, maybe I actually put in a new introduction to that where I'm telling people to go nonlinear, make this be a flat experience, choose your own adventure. If you just want to sit back and listen, do that. Or if you want to jump around and do it on your own terms, then do that. Great. Uh, well, so this Skin the resources folder with the different discussions. Yes. Cool. I can see them then, yeah. And then uh, there is a you try it, try it interactive exercise description. I want you guys to go ahead and open that and see if you're able to make edits. See if you have permission to edit at this point. Interactive ex exercise. Okay. I've got hiccups, I've just eaten. <laughs> Yeah, editing's allowed. You okay, see perfect. The uh, you'll see there's some bullet points there. Those are the questions that I open in questions that I plan to ask people to uh, help us improve our routing function. Take a look at those and see if, uh, especially those of you who are going to talk about routing, see if those make sense. 
The idea is to put them on to dealing with things that are actual challenges at this point after you know, everything we've gone through. I'm opening all the wrong documents. Tyler, do you want to just pop the link into the uh, chat there? Oh, yeah. So when it comes to the routing on the slides, I've not actually filled a slide, but I've kind of written some notes you know, the talk notes. I've written some things on there that I think, um, well, I've, I've filled out some of my thoughts. I don't know how I'm going to turn that into a visual. I really am a bit like, don't know what to do with that. Because I feel like routing is a very unvisual, amorphous way of describing things. But, you know, we'll see. I, re I mean, I really like what uh, Derek made, so maybe there's maybe there is a good way of explaining it. Do those do those questions make sense? Yeah, I think they're good good questions. Yeah, I think they're reasonable questions. Is it is it current? Is it relevant? Tyler, can you share your screen because I'm getting lost in, in documents? Okay, let me try to share my screen. That's a great idea. Oh, it will be so there's much there's five there's six of us in this document, so I'm assuming we're all in there. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I might be in there twice. Someone's idle, but everyone else is is live. Yeah, it just helps having a screen because then the person that is asking question can actually like show the context. Okay. I think you can also highlight. If I highlight the first question, then you see it. Uh, the problem, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, we see that. Okay, Di Tyler got to it first. Thank you. <laughs> I was in the process of changing uh, uh, permissions and stuff to try to make it happen. Yeah, it's fine. I, d I don't know if it's because it's our call or just, I don't know. I don't think, I think the permissions are open. It's fine. Okay, yeah. So this, so the questions this are, how do we, how can we, uh, how can, that doesn't make any sense anymore. What can, or can what can be done to make routing better uh how do we quickly find a place for both people who like to jump into an ambig ambiguous situation and chart their own path as well as those who prefer to contribute by working on a defined task how do we address the hundreds of interested participants who don't see a place and to contribute immediately and how do we address existing contributors who want to find a new task they're the good questions i think like the coronavirus uh original level of ambiguity, right? It's like an over kind of like, how do we do a big thing? And here's some specific questions. And then we just kind of see where it goes from there. So one thing, and I let me know what you think of this, but for the how do we address the hundreds of interested parties who don't see a place to contribute immediately, um, a, a slightly different framing of it that might be useful is just around, well, I'm trying to think that really, I guess that's coming down to the engagement part, but it's trying, trying to identify yeah, never mind. I'm realizing what I'm talking about is actually the engagement slice of the same question. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's also to a certain extent, um, how do we define um, what level of interest people have to be engaged as well is a, is a question that right. I, it's, it's a question that we, we're, we're trying to work on, which is where like, we're trying to think, you know, trying to, well, it's not in the process yet, but we will work in towards like a survey type system where we can find out what level of because some people might be just curious observers and have absolutely no intention of ever contributing and that's fine but we need to understand that within the the groups that exist so that's one of the questions that might be good to ask as well like a, 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 just edit the document yeah. and put it right on there i think the proper question is uh, how we make uh, how we make sure that it, it will not become a closed uh, a closed system because as people as members are older in the community and newcomers come on maybe 
if there is no proper uh, structure, they won't be able to join existing teams and uh, integrate with others. Especially if we're talking a year from now or two years, maybe it's, uh, that, that will be a major issue from... I think that's exactly right. Can you add that under the next set of bullet points, which is how do you check if it's aligned with our principles? Because I think that's one of the principles is that we don't become closed and that it remains open to everybody. And the image that comes to mind, I'm sure we can find a good evocative image for it, is it's kind of a, a it's like a London Underground situation, or it's like, it's like wiring often ends up being where you have layer upon layer that accretes, and that as you keep on adding those layers, it gets less and less functional to do it, and harder and harder to figure out what the next layer is going to look like. And so, yeah, it becomes more and more impermeable. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a side effect of... Um... Over information overload, isn't it? The longer something like this goes on for, the more is in the system. And yeah. we need to work out the balance of how much is enough to be useful information and knowledge to understand it and how you can get to how you can contribute in a place where you don't have to understand everything. You just have to understand the principles of how we work, um, what's expected of you in like behavioral and you know how you how you treat each other and who you can ask questions that are pertinent to what you're wanting to be interested in right now, which is where like coordinators are really useful. Like the point where it's, we need to, we do need to get better at defining and, and, and organizing that, uh, that flow, that understanding of flow of where people flow through and which part of the, the own management system people end up or is a good contributor or a good person to just talk to. But again, not in the sense that it's this is the only person you could talk to. This, these are just a good person to signpost you to, you know, to do a little bit of discovering yourself. And it's a balancing act of the two. All right. Uh, so, uh, Tyler, since you're up, would you take us back to the first logistics slide on the screens? First logistics slide. Just go up to the very top. Yay. Okay. Um, so it, I noticed that not everyone has all their sections filled out yet. Uh, the thing that we're still looking for there is to make sure that there are bullet points in there that make it so that people can get the gist if they want to read ahead. Um, should we, do we want to put a Creative Commons attribution on uh, these documents? I think that's a great idea. And if so, I assume it's just uh, uh, attribution? Yeah. Okay. If, if we are planning to, to put out something uh, like a white paper, maybe uh, something like that. Yeah, well, I'm thinking the, sl the slides are going to be public, right? Okay. Well, obviously, they can be. So, I don't know if it's uh, in alignment with the conference, though, because it is a closed conference, after all. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, I, I would presume that we, that, that it's, because it's our slide deck that we're bringing to it, that they don't have a presumption of ownership of it. They get to be the first place where it's seen, but... Mm -hmm. uh, but it's ours to share. They can't right. do anything about that at yeah. all, no matter what we they should, talk we about. Should, we should ask, though, probably, maybe just to avoid any misunderstanding. Yeah. We can obviously say they cannot uh, forbid us, but we need to know. It's okay. not even a question yeah. I haven't had, but fair enough, yeah. And I did have you guys go in and try the back channel docs and make sure that you can edit, so great. Um, uh, so uh, the, next, the next item on there was using meat. Uh, and the question was, uh, can we give the mic, can we turn the mic over to participants to to talk, or is it only people who are initial panelists or whatever who are able to talk? Uh, I'm not even sure how Meet works in regards to webinars versus conference calls. I'm not even sure what how it's defined as the difference between them. Okay. But there is probably some difference. I'm just not sure if that's a, a premium side of meet and i'm not sure if we're using that version because are we making ours and people joining ours or are we joining the one that's been organized by the 
conference. Meet has a raised hand feature. So the presenter sees the list of people that have uh, raised hands and can unmute uh, whoever he wants. It's uh, this is the standard procedure. But that's for uh, I think for up to 150 people, the, the interface is the same. So it will probably be the standard one. Okay. Uh, so let's let's. Uh... We'll do it that way if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll just have people report out in chat. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it's probably a good idea for us to make sure that somebody checks in with the Jitma folks to, because Tyler, your question of like, is it our own that we're sending a link to or is it one that they're initiating? And whether there's anything we need to like make sure that they're setting up as co-host or anything that most of them don't have to worry about but because we're doing something weird. We'll just want to make sure that we're able to do all the things that we need to. So, so somebody actually probably should be like the JITMA contact person about logistics, about just plain, how do we get on? How do we <laughs> logistics? Uh, I don't know who the right person is for that, but I'm pretty sure it's not me. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't tell her if that's something that you want to take on or if that's something that, I mean, I know Archer has been in, in discussion with... Um, I've not really Stibe. beyond. I don't even think I was. I was barely in the call when Agnes Stibe did a did our did the webinar with us. So I don't really have much of um. I don't have much of a contact with him. So I'd feel a little bit like out of sorts with it, really. So okay. I'll, I'd rather... I'll I'll make the notes in the chat here, and then we'll see maybe if Archer, who's been in the most frequent contact with uh, with Agnes, can can do that. I had to, weirdly enough, I had to correct um, him on one of his little LinkedIn posts today because it made no sense. I felt bad, but I'm like, yeah, you, your explanation does not make logical sense. I can see what you're getting at, but you did it completely backwards. He was talking about a two-way mirror being the only way you could see through things. I mean, a two-way, a, a, a two-sided mirror is literally opaque to everyone. <laughs> you can't see through it. It's reflective on both sides. <laughs> it was a strange idea. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I apologize for my colleagues' contributions in the background. Um, and then there's advertising and inviting Corona Y folks. Uh, Archer and I met with the um, uh, the agency that is, that is working with Corona Y, and they said that there would be no press interest in the webinar as such, but they're going to take a look at it afterwards and see if there are uh, interesting key takeaways that they might be able to to use to try to connect with uh, business types of uh, publications and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and Daniel, well, you, I believe you were out of the room, but everyone oh, decided uh, that you should be the MC. Yeah, I'm fine with that. If we can make sure that folks get me uh, whatever sort of bio information or anything like that when I'm introducing them, then that would be great. Yep, uh, I suggest that instead of having full bios, we just basically do names when this with this slide up. Perfect. So that we don't take time away from sharing info. They can all go to our LinkedIn slides, slides if they want to know more about us. Yeah. And I assume and we're going to be doing that in an, in an informal, informal MC uh, sort of section. So I'll announce the sections, I'll announce the key people who are, in, who are uh, speaking for each given one. But then after that, we'll, we'll enter sort of free-for-all mode. That sounds perfect. Um, if everybody else can just get their pictures and links up here, that would be great. Yep, well, I'll, I'll sort mine out. My, I've got a picture and I'll just use my LinkedIn information. Makes sense. Okay, perfect. Um, and I think that's all I had. Um, organization is the best which organize. That one is actually intended to be a list of um, kind of what are some unmanagement principles. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, right, which are in the, in the, in the notes. Um, and I'm thinking that the principles ones might be a good place to actually have text that, that for, for all of the uh, challenges where we get to the princip relevant principles, we might want to put some text in there. And the, since there, since no uh, formal list of principles exists, you get to make up your own uh, or whatever whatever you want to do, whatever you think. I, I was thinking that if there's a real if there's a formal 
if there's a formal list of unmanagement principles, it feels very unmanaged. It feels very managed for unmanagement. I mean, like, exactly. it's kind of it's the opposite of the point of it. Yeah. And I, th I think that's probably one of the things that we need to talk about on this is that there is no formal list and it'll look different for different organizations and they, you know, they kind of show up and then you pay attention to them. It's, it's, it's more of a philosophy than, a, than a, anything. I, I think one of the things we can, can highlight there is also that the principles that we're pointing out aren't definitional, they're observational. So it's not that we've said, these are the things that are the things that if you apply these, it makes it unmanagement. It's that we've looked at what we've done so far and say, hey, these seem to be some of the dominant strands that we're seeing. Um, yeah. But that, that also could be uh, a, a freakishly unbalanced representation because we have a single unmanagement project from which to evaluate that. Right. And I think the other thing that goes along with that is this notion that if you try to just take a bunch of principles and apply them, you will fail. Right. Right. But if you observe the things that are valuable and important and uh, align yourself with them, then you succeed. So it's. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I mean, I really, I really think that's such a key part for us to talk about is that the whole thing with that management is it's not here's the blueprint go do it it's being in a constant state of presence to what's going on what are the challenges that are happening which things are going well um it's, it's much more like surfing than it is like sculpting i like that's that. a good so, that's Daniel, good that's a good analogy yeah. it's a good feeling Daniel, on the uh unmanagement slide do you want to put a little section in there where you will you talk about those things yeah i'd love to okay just add it in there Just put it in the, you know, take some time, put it in the notes, write it, write, you know, give, let them read ahead, but also um, uh, yeah, use it as, as a, a, a talking point. Yep. Face versus two faces. <laughs> what is this about? Is this about like perspective? Is yeah. this about the concept it's, it's of that? It's about if you, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it, but until then it's invisible. Yeah, that's a really good description of like optical illusions where you can get yourself, yeah, one way you can only ever see it one way until someone or it gets explained to be another way and then you're like, oh, damn it, I can't unsee that anymore. No, it's just in, yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that analogy. Again, I like that, that, that description. I just, I've never asked the question and I was just curious. I think curiosity is really important in this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Just, just, just that, um, not necessarily endless curiosity, but cu human curiosity, curiosity about other people, about how they feel and, and having that constant conversation, making that effort to have the conversations and the discussions and, the, and challenging it and not always, yeah, definitely not making it about you. It's about everything working, even if it's hard to explain. <laughs> Knowledge management. Don't feel it's completely unreadable to me. That's weird. Your shows up as uh, a black background. Uh, my entire computer runs on dark mode. Uh, I'm a night out. So did you just oh. change it to white so that nobody else will be able to read it now? No, I just took the highlight off of it. Because oh. it had a white, it had, it had a white highlight for me and white text, so I was like, I have no idea what that says. Right. So the basics here that I've gotten down for that one here. Let me. I'm just going to go in so I can see as well. I need. I still need to put some slides to this. And if people are fine with it, my my uh, leaning for these ones is to do it kind of like a, an ignite one. So for each of the main points I'm talking about, it'll just be a simple slide with a big image and then just talk about the piece and then go through those reasonably quickly rather than have one bullet point slide up for a long period of time. But the main thing is, oh, go ahead. I said, I said yes. Great. Um, no. The most of what I have down for here is under the challenge side and I'd love to get some, some, some feedback from folks, but the, the key challenge is that, I'm trying to see if I have a different place where some of this is listed as well. Um, yeah, the, the, the piece around having a whole bunch of different types of data to manage and that everybody's coming in with their own different familiarity with different tools and different approaches that they're used to applying. Um, and that, you know, that, that Google spreadsheets 
own documents, Trello, Slack, that whole set of things and the ways that we've either used and been frustrated by or continue to use those um, has been one of the sets of challenges. Um, another key piece has been translation of knowledge from one medium to another, primarily Slack, which has been hugely generative of information, um, getting that information actually parsed out and, and teased into somewhere where people can reference it or act on it. Um, uh, I, I would say is one of our key remaining challenges is, is doing that translation consistently. Um, and yeah. then the other one that I mentioned in there is just that access management uh, piece. So balancing transparency and security, trying to make sure that everybody who needs it has easy access to whatever they want, while having some kind of mitigation of the ability of someone to just kind of come in and take a sledgehammer to everything. Absolutely. I, I don't know, Yasin, you might have some, some uh, good insights on areas that I'm not covering there in terms of some of the knowledge ma management challenges that, that have been happening. I think it pretty much uh, covers everything. One, one thing we discussed previously, but I don't think we reached uh, a, fi a final answer is whether we will uh, answer questions or talk about problems that may come out from being uh, totally transparent and uh, everything. Uh, because also Arthur mentioned a few, a couple of cases where this has gone uh, the bad way, mm -hmm. but we don't want the, the conversation in the conference to go there. So I'm not sure how we can deal with it. Yeah, I mean, if I someone think, asks. I, I think it makes sense to, to probably stay a little bit broad stroke and high level when we talk about some of that part, um, but then we can give some of the basics and say like, you know, there's been times where there has been um, some, 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 personal challenges or conflict pieces that have come up and that having that's been one of those places if that's what you're, what you're talking about where having that balance has been useful so that there can be private conversation where a lot of people may be involved but it's, it's contained so that it's not disrupting everybody's just ability to do day-to-day -day pieces but where any of the participants are welcome to bring people in specifically who they feel like would be useful for the conversation. And that that's been a case where that non-transparency or that opacity has been useful and effective. And that we then report out anything that feels like it's relevant to the community. I mean, there was a, I had a question today. I had a little bit of like an introductions call today. I had a couple of people in that are new. It's going to be something I'm going to try doing a bit more of like as a welcome get to know you a bit more on a one-to-one -one and then obviously introduce them to each other. And one of the people asked who was um, there, it's like, oh, well, you know, can I join any channel? Or, you know, do I, do I have to like have permission who will ask people on like, oh, no, 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 no. Said if it's a public channel, go for it. Join wherever you want. Go find what's interesting. Be in all okay. of them, be in as many as you want. There is no like limitations to it. And I said, and said, and I even said, I said, I would try, I'm trying to actively move away from private channels for, certain like for for teams and it's something we need to definitely but i can see why people have private channels for starting discussions and we even do it when we have like a start of a new team there's normally like five or ten people and they start to discuss it and it starts to formalize and once it starts to formalize as a thing and there's some work done then it gets a public channel and it becomes a public discussion point and anyone they're interested can join into it it's sometimes it's like yeah if it was all in public it might be just overwhelming more than anything especially like the idea formulation process but if we think other people are interested in that idea formulation no one would ever go oh don't add this person or don't add that person so yeah it, it is overwhelming even now so maybe that's Absolutely. a problem because that's a problem that also may come up as a question how do we deal with it? now it's a thousand members if it's five thousand what what will it be like how can public channels will be useless practically, most right. probably. Yeah, and I mean, I think that there's a bunch of different pieces that, that um, another, another problem that, that gets bigger as we scale um, is going from, from things being in someone's brain to actually having documentation for the systems and the structures that are there. Uh, so, you know, if there's, there's probably uh, a handful of people if, that if all of a sudden they disappeared, core parts of how we do things right now that make it work would, would just vanish. So like Tyler, with the rooting piece, if you weren't there, just a huge base of knowledge about what actually has functioned and how we go about it um, would, would, would be gone. 
because we don't actually. I don't, I don't feel like that's true, but okay. maybe that's just. I don't feel like that's true. I feel like. Um, I don't feel like I'm doing anything that anyone else couldn't do. The only difference is, is I am doing it, so no one else is doing it. You know, it's not the... I'm under the same impression, actually, but I actually disagree because, uh, you know, through a couple of different conversations with different people, including Daniel, I do believe that people that are attracted to our community possess very unique skill sets and very unique type of, uh, you know, abilities that uh, may look like a, you know, a thing that anyone can do, but at the end, accumulating is not. Yeah, and I, th I think especially for there, like, it might be, Tyler, that there would be like five or six principles that, that you could simply write out and say, like, look, know what's going on everywhere, um, talk to people to figure out what they're up to and what they want to be up to, and then connect them to the right people and let them take it from there. But even just that, that in itself is a methodology for how to do rooting that is, that is extremely effective at Corona Y and is different from how a lot of organizations would do it. Absolutely, yeah, it's absolutely the opposite of how most, because yeah, you'd have a HR management and a HR team and the HR team would only ever know when someone needs something because the director of sales goes, well, we need more people or the IT department says, oh, we need this skill, person with this skill, and then they'd sit down and discuss discuss what they actually need and formalize it. And it wouldn't be the HR person knocking through the door, knocking on the door, going, "Looks like you need an extra quarter because you guys are struggling with this thing here." That's just not how. I mean, I don't do that. I still kind of wander around, but the difference is, is um, because most of the well, a big chunk of the communication happens in places where I can just join in, you know, be it be it public publicly accessible calls or obviously Slack, which I am in probably ninety percent of the channels. I mean, I think I am. I can't be sure because there's some private ones. Um, I'm probably in about ninety percent of the channels, and the the difference is, is I spend a probably well, there's no there's no probably by I spend far too much of my time reading everything that's written that i can see even if i just glance over it i glance over it and i'm like oh well you know slava's talking about this or this person's talking about that and it just goes into the memory bank of like oh well let and, or if it's a case of somebody talking about our needs and i'll jump in and go do you actually need someone to do this right so and i think that, and from, from a zoomed out perspective it's just those, those are all highlighting the fact that i think there really is and that you would be an exa a good example of it, that need that we have to translate that, that, that experiential understanding of how we do things into systems that can be both duplicated and that people can be onboarded into. Um, I like, who, I'm not sure. Can I, can, I, can I interject just, yeah, just for, for a second? So just to support uh, the point that I think Tyler is making and also Artur, uh, then just to quote Tyler, that the difference is that I'm the one who is actually doing that. So if you try to convert uh, Tyler's experience, if you want to translate it into like, let's say five principles um, or five, I don't know, uh, like rules um, of the game, then I think the sixth rule should be, you've got to be a Tyler, okay? To actually apply those five principles. So that's the problem why, I mean, we cannot fully automate or we cannot fully replace Tyler. Even if you study every move that he makes, like right. we need to find someone who can apply those principles. And I'm personally not ready to, to do that in, uh, for uh, like, uh, if Tyler is missing for some reason. So I, that's like. I think, one of the, I think what you're touching on there is also one of those things that is so critical to how, to, to that unmanagement piece about how it is people centered that it's not that there's an exact job description which Tyler has fit into and is then taking over, is that Tyler has taken on doing a certain thing and is bringing all of his skills and personality to making that thing happen. So yeah, I think, I think it's a great point and something that we do want to just to maybe highlight to people is that it, it, it isn't just here's, here's the roles that you can have somebody step into, but how do you best find what the skill sets and what the abilities of your people are that they're interested in engaging and then empower them to, to do to do that and the, I think and that's what it comes down to uh, not just skills not just skills just the willpower to do that you've yeah. got to find someone who will be willing to do that you see what I mean yeah which is 
which is more of a question of trying to understand the level of engagement, which is one of the problems. It's one of the things that I've regularly had discussions with, and it's one of the questions I normally ask towards the end of a discussion with someone. I'm like, and now I've actually defined it to two questions. I get to the point like, how much time can you commit to this? And how much mental energy can you commit to this? Because the amount of physical time is not the same as the amount of mental energy. And that's Arta is a prime example. He might only spend a quarter of his day physically doing something to do with Corona Y, but he is probably spending 94 hours a day in his brain doing actual Corona Y stuff. And, and, and the 94 was a random number, but I feel like it's probably about right. He manages to condense a lot of things into a day that even I am confused about. And I like to think that I think fast, so I go through a lot. So yeah, it's, but, it, but, you, but I think uh, Maxim says a f really good point is like, it's not, I'm not solving problems and anyone else has to emulate that. I'm just doing it my way and someone else could turn up and do the same kinds of things or three people could turn up and do the same kinds of things in a different way and still do a good job. It's nobody would have to do exactly how I did. They just have to connect people, find out what's going on try and help. I literally describe my job as trying to help wherever I can. Obviously, it's a really, it's if, a really if I may add something, idea. Uh, if I may add something, it's the, the, key, the key principle here, I think, is the difference between tacit and explicit knowledge. So mm -hmm. when you want to, to replace a person, the, the only way to replace a person that uh, operates on, uh, on tacit knowledge that cannot be transformed to, to explicit rules, it's gradually replacing. So to have a, let's say, a successor, if, if Tyler gets an assistant, gets someone that helps him and starts getting 10% of his work and then 20, 30, he, he will replace him eventually. Or uh, as an evolution that someone comes up and does the same thing uh, better. So there is a... But still it's a gradual uh, replacement. You cannot say, I want to leave these are the things I do, this is the way I do them, bye-bye, I'm gone, and you can replace me the next minute. The next minute. It's, yeah, it's, it's a problem. I'm, I won't mind, but I went to a really interesting talk not long ago about this very idea about institutional memory, about organizational management systems, about, and it was from a, a guy uh, who does this for a living in a, in a tech company. And it was, a, and I really had a long conversation with him afterwards about it, and we connected a lot because it is that sort of psychology. And you use the perfect words. That's what Jock brought to back. That that the difference between the tacit knowledge and the and, and the explicit knowledge. It's like I don't understand all the. You you guys look at what I do differently to what I look at what I do because you'll be looking at like I'm doing these things because I've got these skills, and whereas I'd be like, that's just like me that's just like my makeup is not a skill that i've ever acquired i am type you know i've ever made time and effort to be that way i just that's the way i'm wired and like that goes to the question that goes to the point where we're saying well you just need a tyler and it's like no you just need to accept that everyone's going to come at it differently and the flexibility is the answers really so uh, yeah if, if if i got run over by a bus you guys would be fine i mean i'd, I'd be in pain or in dead, but you, you guys would be fine because someone would step up and someone would solve bits of the problems, even if they only took over a bit of it and another person took over. It, I'm just happened to be throwing a lot of time at it, so that's why I'm connected the, to a lot of the, it. The, com the common example in the in the managerial uh, literature is uh, riding the, riding the bicycle. I can teach you how to ride, but I cannot right. give you instructions. I cannot write a book that will you will read and be able to. Yeah, I think it's the difference between skills and knowledge. You can impart knowledge really easily, but skills take time. You, can't, the, you uh, can't speed up a skill, just to carry it on. The, the two parts that I put under how this, this can apply to, to traditional de development um, is in, in every organization, you have your different channels and often they're lossy and, and often they're not even noticed in terms of where, where knowledge lies within the organization. So doing some kind of assessment of what are the actual, not just the formal challenge channels, but all of the different channels in which knowledge is, is generated and propagated. Um, and look at what the lossiness of that is and where is there knowledge that should or could be formalized. Um, and then the key part of that again, is that if you look at it as an exploitative extractive process, 
you're inherently going to miss a lot of the key stuff that when it's actually encouraging and fostering the people in your organization feeling valued that's when they're going to be able to provide a whole bunch of the different knowledge that otherwise they're just like oh well yeah i mean in a way almost akin to, to you know tyler when you were saying like yeah i i, I just do it um that it's when people are able to actually feel like oh okay i i'm actually seen and respected and known in terms of what i'm doing in the organization um that that's when a person feels like um, anybody even cares to know like yeah here's here's some of the cool kind of things that I've figured out to help me do what I'm doing I think 90% of people in most organizations have systems that they've developed that they never share around how they do that kind of stuff yeah I think I've probably just got a little bit more experience because I've had I, I've had so many different jobs in so many different industries and very rarely have I had a job description that's like, these are your five things that you do. I have literally had jobs where it's like, you just, just work it out. I'm like, all right, I'll work it out. And I ended up taking on this and take on that problem and solve this and solve that and I'll help with this and I'll, and it just, I just get bigger and bigger. And then I, yeah, exactly. I get smarter with it. So there's things that I don't have to do anymore. I'll, I'll automate. And I, once I've got that free time, I'll just go find something else to, entertain my brain with and challenge with myself with and yeah it's it is just like understanding it's just getting people to be them and be their crazy brain and allowed to be that way and and the reason why i'm putting all my effort and t time and energy into this place is because i do feel valued is because i do feel respected it was because i do feel listened to and it's because i am um, the times when i have succeeded and done really well in an organization i've been is when i've just been allowed to be me and allowed to help wherever I can help and not impeded. And yep. you guys, by the very definition of the fact that no one's managing anyone, no one's impeding me. So I'm just doing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Thank you all for taking the time to, to, to kind of go over this knowledge management piece with me. Around the engagement thing, I, actually, I should have done it a week ago, but it's, I've started it today. I think what's going to be a good approach for that. I have a few things that I want to say, and there's a, a few notes that are there. But I've actually, I'm taking an unmanagement approach to it and I've thrown the question out on Slack to our membership to see if people can say, like, what is it that keeps you engaged and have it so that people can, can give their different answers and then use a modicon so that we can kind of heat map out um, which are the things that have been most important to people. Um, and then my thought is to either do some kind of a word cloud or do something similar that, that, that gives a sense of what the community's answer to that question is because that's going to be more important than what my answer to the question is. Yeah, absolutely. So other other? Uh, that, that description, that line right there is perfect. Self-starters with a high chaos tolerance. Just the tolerant of, of, of tolerant, yeah, chaos or, um, I don't know if chaos is the word for it. Toler tolerant of unknown. Ambiguity. Tolerant yeah, tolerant ambiguity, much better word actually, ambiguity, a tolerance of ambiguity, just, and, and, and that's, one of, that's one of the people, that's when I do meet people and I talk to them and I have that early conversation with them and I make that point along, it's like, yeah, we, we need people who are just willing to get on with things and you don't have to be the right person or the perfect person for it and someone might come along and do a better job at some point but the job still needs to get done and if you've recognized it can be done and you feel like you can do something to improve it, go for it. No one's going to tell you not to do it. In this organization. Chaos tolerance is good in my opinion. Yeah, like we, we are not looking for a strict uh, scientific thing, <laughs> but it, it gets the message across. Yep, yep. Chaos is better. Because ambiguity is very often confused with lack of, lack of substance. Like maybe yeah, exactly. we don't have stuff to do or to discuss. That's why. Uh, so yeah. But chaos is at least exciting. Okay. <laughs> and I, it's I a, a buzzword. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, no, I'm I'm a chaos nerd, but um, but I think both are probably actually important because it is chaotic, but it is often also ambiguous. And one of the things is that people have to be able to have a high tolerance for that, and ideally a willingness to step into that ambiguity and sort of collapse it down and say, here's an approach we can take, because um, most of our major uh, progress in terms of systems have come from exactly that of simply someone recognizing something where we like we know something needs to happen and we're talking around it but then somebody's saying like here's a system that might work let's like i'm trying Cut this what it. do you think yeah and actually i don't think we like i think externally we have chaos but if you measure it internally it's not chaos it's oh, actually I, I'm, I'm using... a very calculated uh, process and it just looks random 
but in reality, like it, it actually collapses to a very, very structured thing. It just like, I, I believe in like whatever matter of time we'll be able to analyze all the historic data and be like, Oh yeah, this is why it's happened. It happened. And this is yeah. how it worked. And, and, I'm, I'm and quite think, enjoying think, the collapsing chaos analogy as well. It, it makes you feel very quantum. It's, right. like it's, not, it's, it's not an answer collapse. until yeah, yeah, we're, yeah it's, it's not an answer until it is an answer, and then it is, and it's and everyone accepts it. Yeah. So it is a it is a soliton if we are speaking with physics terms. <laughs> because... and one of the important things though is to point out that it's important not to exclude people who like to find tasks. No. That's right. And, and, and that's what this line is actually talking about, is that specifically it's the people who that chaos ambiguity tolerance is high, have an easy job of it, but the, one of the core challenges we have is getting everybody else involved. And that that can go from both sides, either the people who are looking for management or the people who are looking to manage. Um, and that both of those sets of people, when that's the dominant way they work, have a challenge figuring out how they fit into, into Coronaly. But yeah, we just kind I think, of the, I think the, would, the chaotic I think the, ones are the ones that try yeah, I think to the, formalize it for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the best the best way to engage with people who, with like low tolerance. I think uh, in the beginning of Corona Y project, uh, that's what uh, Artur did, and I think that would help many people to actually engage. Remember that uh, matrix, like where we assess yeah. all the Chicago. So for me, it was like, man, this is such a boring task. And I think, yeah, it has some value and everything, but it's like, and, but some, but people responded and, and, and people got started becoming like more engaged. Uh, so yeah, so the people need some structure, like those people, especially with low tolerance to chaos and ambiguity. And uh, I think it's good. It's a good exercise, maybe even like to get uh, to, maybe exercise for this particular workshop. Like, let's solve this matrix, okay? Uh, and see how we can at least do something in a structured way. Um, so that was a good example from our history. Yeah, and actually the, using that example, the, the thing that, that I like about that, and as, as you're describing that, is that the people who are good at bridging between that high level of chaos and actually turning it into something that's capturable, um, periodically crystallizing it into something that the rest of the community can engage with and kind of sink their teeth into, which is exactly what Archer did in that point, where he took the, the set of ranging conversations, turned it into something where everybody could easily see the matrix, make their decision points on it, and then see that have an impact on how the community was moving forward. It's balling lightning, isn't it? It's literally balling lightning. It's, it's crazy and it takes lots of people to do it, but when you occasionally ball lightning, you're like, yeah, it just had that visual, um, have you seen the Witcher series? Yeah, yeah. The, and there's there's witches in the Witcher series that are being taught to bottle lightning, and most of them can't. And it just and, it, and that was my mind is like, Arta basically said, "I'm going to try and bottle lightning," and everyone's like, "That's insane! Why would you do that?" And then he did, and everyone went, "Ooh, I want to go help him try and do that again." And I'll, I'll and the more people joined in holding the idea because the chaos is hard and it takes more of us to rein it in, and some people are accepting of the chaos, but then we can then formalize it and, and, and channel it at things and be more concrete and real by that point. But yeah, the, the, the bottle in lightning I really liked because it is, yeah, lightning is chaotic, but it's very designed. One yeah. thing I noticed uh, a lot in Corona Y is that people that uh, are new tend to, to think in terms of a hierarchy. So they follow they follow orders, if I may use this word, from the person that onboarded them. It, it has happened to me with a couple of uh, people as well. Uh, the first uh, days, they start, they think like uh, it is a you are their manager, and after a, a couple of discussions, they understand the whole thing. So, so it is a smooth process in the end. Yeah, it's not bad that this happens. But it smooths it out. Mm -hmm. Regrettably, I have to go for one o'clock. I have a, a, a different meeting I need to be in. Are there any, so again, thanks for going over those sections that were, were ones that are part of my focus. Are there any other sections of this that people are wanting to have sort of our collective uh, ability to, to uh, chat about? I've, I'll have a quick talk through what I've put, which is more questions than answers because 
that's sort all of like I could come up with. Like, how do you systemize interest growth? But yeah, how do you plan for choice? Which is a big problem with routing is like, I can't plan for what someone else wants to do because I can't, the way I look at it is, is I'm not there to tell anyone what to do. I'm there to direct people towards where they can be useful and want to be useful. Because we said it before, yes, someone would be willing to do a job they don't want to do for a bit, but their interest tolerance is going to burn out really quickly. Whereas if they are passionate or excited or challenged in, an, in a novel way, they're going to stick around just because they like, you know, some people like brain teasers, some people do puzzles for fun. So um, I, can't, I don't know, I just, yeah. And then I like traditional organizations, organizations use salary hierarchy status and the fear of loss to make people produce. We have none of these markers. We need to understand the intangible human factors of why people join. These skills people have to- Actually, they need that, right? I, I will always remember that call that we had during the first phase of Kaggle where some person did something so amazing that people started like saying, Hey, this person should get a raise or this person should get a bigger salary, you know, just jokes. But it made sense because people couldn't really represent their gratitude in any other way, because that's how it happens. Yeah. yeah because that's the, that's the way the current system works. And we're now challenging the entire idea of that. No, and I, I really love that example because it is such a one of it's people feeling compelled to say, like, you should get the stuff and we don't have any of the usual stuff. And so they're using something that is a ludicrous example within Corona Y, but even in itself by doing that, they're, they're getting to the piece, which is the other part which people do get, which is respect and admiration and recognition for what it is that they're doing. I think uh, this uh, uh, funny emojis that's yeah. <laughs> excellent example and we allow anyone there. to add more emojis and people do and i love the fact that when i'm like who like where did that one even come from when someone gets one of the face pictures and just like the first day when art has turned up and we were, everyone was like where did that even come from and you have to go look and someone's at the well, it's crazy because i was when a week sick. i had one i was like what <laughs> i was sick in a way and then all of a sudden i jumped back into slack and i see my face being emoji and i was like wait what happened <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the magic and, and it's a good example of of that rather than us or rather again for the people who are in the audience as well rather than it being or the organization's job to come up with what all of the different modes of reciprocity are. Um, there's some of that that absolutely happens, but some of it is getting out of the way and letting people come up with their own culture of, a, it's like a culture of kudos and coming up with their own way of figuring out how to acknowledge each other and knowing when as for a normal organization, when is management to just step back and let, and let culture grow um, and provide the environment that allows that to happen. Yeah, I think that goes back to the, the the framework and the fact that we know we don't talk the framework. We are it. And when I say we, I'm mean about like collectively. But we are influential in that we try and we describe what's already there and what a lot of people already agree with, you know, transparency, honesty, respect, you know, respect of cultural differences, respect of different knowledges, respect of different abilities. And, and it also goes back to the idea that like we, I personally think absolutely everyone is here is amazing. Like I don't care how much or how little you've done. You're already amazing by my book because you turned up, you turned up when the world was on, the world was chaotic rather than sat and just watch Netflix all the time. And there's nothing wrong with being a consumer. There's nothing wrong with doing that but you turned up and that is a personality trait that was, is worth celebrating. Even if you do nothing else after that point, you're already awesome by my book. And that's one of the things that any, anytime someone comes up and, you know, I've got, I've had conversations with people who've, when I do like check-ins and, you know, mental health check-ins and I, whenever someone puts something that's not good, I, I do, I personally reach out. I don't know if anyone else does. And every time I've had a really, really meaningful person, people centered conversation about, you know, you're awesome. Don't forget that. Don't absolutely, absolutely do not forget that. Don't care how little you think you're doing or you're not doing it right or you're not, you're not good enough or any of that. It's not true because you're awesome and you just need to remember that. And yeah, it's, it's, and it makes me feel good because I'm making someone else feel good. It's the whole hugs 
Like, yeah, yeah. like people, pe right. I'm, I'm a hugger. I am absolutely a hugger. And people are like, oh, you're really nice. I'm like, I get hugged. I like hugs. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like a win-win. I give you a hug. Right. I also get a hug. It's, every, everyone's getting hugs. This is not a bad thing. And I look at right. the same sort of thing with positive reinforcement. I feel good for making someone else feel good. It's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a selfishness in yeah, there, but, but it's not. Because I try but, and celebrate look, people. Look, but let's but let's get methodological about that. So mm -hmm. basically, this is how people learn the best. Like, if you want to express certain principles or certain models, people learn best when they visualize those principles in some personal example, like when, what how we discuss things and like, hey, let's just do, go like Ray Dalio on that, or let's just you should you should you should just Tyler this idea, okay? Like you should just like Daniel on, on this. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so so it's not about celebrating uh, uh, each other, each other's names or accomplishments. It's just about how people learn. Like they meet this this very vivid uh, um, embodiment of the principles. Okay, uh, and the, and this is where people learn best. Virtues uh, of the values. Yeah, I, I have to. I have to leave. Um, I can't wait to watch the rest of the conversation. On that note, um, I think it would be great when we when we give people access to the documents and to the um, the the slides for this presentation to also link in the videos that show how we created it because what we're doing is exactly what the whole process is yep. and and that that fits with so much of how we do things. Anyways. Sure. Thank you all, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks everyone. I unfortunately also have to leave and I have to use the, the Zoom for another Corona Y call. So- We all have to leave. Yeah, all right. So thanks everyone. And yeah, let's uh, get back to Slack. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.